Hello everyone, I'm Kimberly Garcia. I'm a rising senior at Santa High School. Today my um, group and I will talk about our research computation of protein design of nicotine biosensors. Hello everyone, my name is Victor Baton and I'm a rising junior at Carson High School. My name is Mary Jean Macias and I'm a rising senior at Bravo Medical Magnet High School. Hello, my name is Angelina Castro and I'm a rising senior at Plucky Cal's High School. In our table of contents, you will see all the things we'll be covering today. We'll be introducing you to our research topics, showing you all our questions, providing background information, going into depth about the tools we used, showing our hypothesis, our methods, our findings, the future research that our lab mentor Nick will be doing. And lastly, we'll end with our acknowledgements. We students began this research project with minimal knowledge about on the topic of amino acids and protein. Over the course of the past five weeks, we learned the basics and complexities of protein biochemistry and protein designs. Familiarize ourselves with various programs used to design proteins and analyze the outputs of those programs to determine the appropriate alterations to the protein ionic sniffer. The main objective of our research was to stabilize but the protein INIC sniffer, which stands for intensity based nicotine sensing fluorescent reporter and functions as a nicotine sensor. By detecting the concentrations of nicotine in smokers in real time through a wearable patch, this protein will enable tailored nicotine replacement strategies to help people stop smoking. The goal of our research is to improve the protein INIC sniffer to handle higher, to work in higher temperatures and work in sweat. Nicotine is a highly addictive component of tobacco. As we know, prolonged tobacco use from combustible sources can cause lung cancer, xenia, and other lifelong diseases. Many people who smoke develop a dependence on nicotine, which then leads to withdrawal symptoms when they try to stop. Common side effects um, include loss of appetite, sweating, nausea, increase of heart rate, and high blood pressure. If our goal is reached, the stabilization of the protein ionic sniffer will allow people to fight their addiction to nicotine. Now, I will be giving a brief um, summary to Spanish speakers. La nicotina es el componente altamente adictivo del tabaco. Como sabemos, el uso prolongado del tabaco, fuentes combustibles, pueden causar cáncer de pulmón, enfisema y otras enfermedades de por vida. Muchas personas que fuman desarrollan una dependencia a la nicotina, lo que provoca síntomas de abstinencia cuando intentan dejar de hacerlo. Los efectos secundarios incluyen pérdida de apetito, sudoración, náuseas, aumento de ritmo cardíaco y presión arterial alta. Si se alcanza nuestro objetivo, la instalación de la proteína INIC Sniffer permitirá a las personas combatir su adicción a la nicotina. Over the course of the program, we focused on three main questions. What does stability mean in a protein? How can we analyze sequence changes to the protein INIC Sniffer? And how can we improve INIC Sniffer to better monitor nicotine levels in sweat? A couple key points in our research are understanding the protein backbone and amino acid side chains. Every protein is made up of repeating chemicals bound together, which are known as amino acids. Each amino acid begins with the amino group and ends with the carboxyl group. The differences between the amino acids arise from the different chemical known as side chains or R groups, which are bound to the central carbon atom. The interaction between all atoms, especially the side chains of the amino acids, determine how the protein folds in 3D. Um, here is protein INIC sniffer. Uh, as you can see, there's a barrel-like protein. There are two very distinct structures. There's a barrel-like protein, and right there in the blue and the slightly red, that's a nicotine molecule. Uh, on the other side, you can see that there's an array of different coil-like shapes and structures. These are called alpha helices. Uh, these helices are comprised of three very important points, and all of these things are very intrinsic to the molecular structure of them. It might look very convoluted, but I trust you, when, when we go through it together, it's gonna be very, very easy to understand. So as Kimberly said, there are amino groups. You can see that at the very, very top. That's also called the N-terminus. And at the bottom, there are carboxyl groups, the very, very bottom and you can see that that's also called the C-terminus. Now, in the middle, these want to stabilize themselves. 
since the carboxyl group is comprised of two, well, it's comprised of oxygen. Oxygen is a very negative um, element and it wants to give an electron to another element that wants an electron, such as a hydrogen on the other side. So in the middle, this will be a very stable protein, a very stable structure. Um, but on the ends where there are no pairing for them, they're gonna be lonely and they're gonna want, they're gonna want to bond to something which instead makes it um, unstable at the, both ends. Uh, this instability, is, or this, uh, well, the top is depolarized, is, uh, sorry, the top is positive and the bottom is negative. The top being positive makes it protonated, the bottom being negative makes it deprotonated. Uh, and this causes a dipole moment. A dipole moment also causes uh, instability, which can create um, thermal inst instability and therefore will make those structures not bond to nicotine as we want them to. Here are some programs that we used. The first one and a very important one is PyMol. Uh, this is used in conjunction with another website called RCSB PDB. Everyone who ever posted a research paper that contained a protein had to include um, a four letter code or four character code. INIC Sniffer's four character code is 7S7U as you can see here. That 7S7U will get you that protein. And it's a very simple website to use as long as you have tutorials, which is why we can do it. Um, and <laughs> right there is a very important feature of the website. Once it goes, you can see that there's a whole sequence of amino acids. And this allowed us to figure out which, which amino acids were, uh, well, which amino acids needed to be changed and which ones could stay the same based on their residues or what was around them. And where we did that was the triad program. Triad is different. It's not just a visualization program such as PyMol. It actually creates simulations of the proteins using a Monte Carlo algorithm, which Victor will explain later. Um, and what this does is it shows us various different um, alterations to the orientation or the 3D like direction that a uh, residue is going in and can see how those bonds will change the stability of the alpha helices. Various proteins such as ours, INIC sniffer, are extremely sensitive to sudden temperature changes. The average human body temperature ranges from 97.6 to 99.6 degrees Fahrenheit and can change throughout the day. Body temperature simply rise due to being exposed to prolonged heat, exercising, and wearing too many layers of clothing. Body temperature is dropped. Sorry. Body temperature is um, body temperature is dropped while being exposed to cold temperatures and inadequate clothing for cold weather. In the cold, your body will use its stored energy, therefore causing your temperature to drop. Understanding this information better allows you to understand why stabilizing a stabilizing ionic sniffer is important. The bulk of our research was done using Triad. Sorry. <clears throat> the bulk of our research was done using Triad. We used two main scoring functions, Phoenix and Rosetta, to get varying solutions to the protein's instability. Sorry. <clears throat> Triad uses Monte Carlo algorithms. They test out different amino acids and side chain rotators. And as you can see on the image on the right, the lighter and more negative the energy is, uh, the more stable. Several mutations were proposed from the simulations that were run. To emphasize one interesting result that showcases a probable helix capping interaction, I wanted to talk about the mutations at position 373. The side chain of threonine at position 373 is not long enough to establish a hydrogen bond with the expectate residue at position 376 in the starting protein. While the simulation with Phoenix retained threonine at this position, the simulation with Rosetta discovered that asparagine is more suitable for position 373 
because it can establish a hydrogen bond with the backbone oxygen of spare at position 376. Introducing a spare gene at position 373 presumably increases the protein stability, therefore making it a more preferable sensor for its application in smoking cessation. In the future, our lab mentor Nick will use this information to generate the protein variants and determine their thermal stability and sensitivity to nicotine. With that knowledge, we'll be able to improve upon the weaknesses of the proteins like insufficient thermal stability. Before we close this off, we'd like to say a huge thank you to our lab teacher, Ms. Alexandra, and our lab mentor, Nick. And a special thank you to professors Steve Mayo and Henry Lester for making this all possible, along with our parents for letting us do this program. And of course, the HSRC program and Ms. Sean. Unfortunately, we weren't able to like interview people who were addicted to nicotine, but instead we mostly ran to simulations that would give us the information needed to improve upon the proteins that would help people fight against it. situations like if you were to run 